song was really cool. If I had to write a song about selling my soul, I would never in a thousand years articulate it as well as this. This to me shows X's true skill and talent in music writing and storytelling. Hi and welcome back, Stuart here with another reaction from the perspective of a psychotherapist. Please remember these are initial impressions unique to me and the position I'm in, in terms of my uh, learning history, my education and my culture. And today we are looking at XXX Tentacion and a track called, I spoke to the devil in Miami, he said everything would be fine. This seems like it's gonna be a really interesting listen and from what I've heard, um, from XSS Tentacion already. I'm really looking forward to listening to this one. So let's see how we get on. Right, initial impressions. I love this minimalist piano in the background. It's there adding some atmosphere, but it keeps the attention on the voice and the lyrics. I need to get into the lyrics a bit more as it seems like there's, there's, there's quite a lot going on here. So let me just go back, listen to some of that again. I'm always where uh, the sun don't shine, the, the tears don't show, don't show hurt won't hurt me now because my heart's been broke, I think it was. I'm always there when the, when the sun don't shine. I'm guessing means that I'm I'm always struggling. The sun doesn't shine down on me. I'm always under this cloud. The tears don't show, maybe meaning that he is now emotionally numb, perhaps disassociates from the pain. Or maybe he means more externally, they don't show as in others won't see it. He won't allow others to see his pain. I'm getting the vibe here that it's more of a case of being emotionally numb. He's been through so much that he just doesn't feel anymore. And that connects with that line of his heart's been broke. Sun don't shine, tears don't show up. Hurt me now, cause heart's been broke. I hate myself, but it won't show up. Constantly lose all my remorse, and it's time for the wolf and three for the shepherd, and it's one for the sheep who led by your leopard off the day. I want to get into this wolf and sheep and shepherd stuff in a minute, but before that, he says, um, hate myself. Oh, didn't go back enough. I hate myself, but it won't show. I constantly lose all my remorse. Again, this seems to relate to this feeling nothing, this feeling no emotion. But but despite that, he has an an a kind of an inner critic, an inner voice that's quite critical. You know, some inner thoughts saying that he hates himself. And although he's 
emotionally numb. His mind is still able to generate some very unhelpful thoughts, some very hurtful and painful thoughts. And having those thoughts is still going to cause some pain, you know, some pain to some extent. Although he probably has this so often that they are just constantly there for him. But that's, that's got to take its toll and probably maintain that emotional numbness as, as a protective factor for him. You know, emotional numbness protects you from painful emotions. But the problem is it blunts all emotions. It tends to blunt all feeling. And it, it doesn't really turn off that voice in the head. And that's, that's, I guess, the difficulty with it. Self, but it won't show I constantly lose all my remorse and it's time for the wolf and three for the shepherd and it's one for the sheep who led by your leopard off the gave us Now I think in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna check this. I'm gonna check this right now before I talk about it because I don't want to go off on what could be a massive tangent here. I'm gonna Google the shepherd, the wolf and the sheep because I think this is a reference to some proverb or, or something like that. So I've got sheep, shepherd, and wolf. Um, shall I do proverb? No. So what do we have? Ah, the shepherd boy and the wolf. A shepherd boy tends this. Yeah, the wolf and the shepherd. Wolf has been prowling around a flock of sheep for a long time, and the shepherd watched very anxiously. The boy who cried wolf. I don't... Okay, so I know this. I think this is one of um, Aesop's fables. In therapy, well, generally, well, I can't really speak for other therapists, but therapists that I know and I work with, and myself included, we like to use kind of metaphors or fables or proverbs or short stories, you know, things with morals at the end to try and articulate what can sometimes be quite abstract concepts. And I think the boy that called Wolf was also one of Aesop's fables that I saw just then. But Aesop had another fable, which was about a shepherd who saw a wolf loitering near his sheep, presumably to eat them. But the wolf couldn't eat them as the shepherd was so close. And I think this goes on for some time. And over that time, the shepherd realises that the wolf wasn't eating the sheep and felt that maybe the wolf was actually quite um, trustworthy and maybe had other motives. So other motives other than wanting to eat. So maybe it just wanted to look over the sheep, just keep a watch of the sheep for some reason. So the shepherd begins to relax more when kind of he sees the wolf about. And then I think the fable goes that the shepherd has to go somewhere for one day for, for some reason. So he wasn't near the flock, but felt that the wolf could be trusted because he hadn't eaten the sheep up to this point. And unsurprisingly, the wolf had a very large sheep dinner whilst the shepherd was away. A wolf is always a wolf. I'm not sure where these numbers come in that X, that X has mentioned. So 10 for the wolf, 3 for the shepherd and 1 for the sheep. Is this just a, like a measure of outcome? So 10 out of 10 for the wolf because he got what he wanted and he kind of waited. He was patient. And is it one out of 10 for the poor old sheep? Because obviously they got eaten. So how does this relate to what X is saying? Now the track is called, I spoke to the devil. So is the devil the wolf and X is the shepherd? The devil is always going to be the devil, no matter what he says or promises. It, 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 he can't be trusted. The wolf will always be the wolf. Or is this, is this the devil telling X to be more like the wolf to get what he wants. So be patient, wait, bide your time. Oh, 
there's so much to think about. All right, let's carry on. More sinners, ten for the wolf thing, three for the shepherd, and this one for the sheep who led by your leopard often gave his reception as a handle of weapon took a bite of your apple, give me all you can offer. Now I'm trapped in a change of maze, setting my soul ablaze, couldn't control the pace. Words is going hey, heartless is reckless, is this word of a I really like this line, the perception as a handle of a weapon. Now you can change someone's perception or give them a, a new point of view and turn them into a weapon or turn them into someone to do your bidding. You can change someone's behavior by, by giving them a reason to and something to believe in. And that can be very helpful in some circumstances. You know, just like we do in therapy, we can quite often shift people's perspectives. But on the flip side, that can be quite dangerous. You know, there's a lot of vulnerable people out there who can be manipulated and exploited into doing things that aren't good, that aren't good for them. And by playing with, with motivating factors, you can, you can manipulate someone's behaviour. And I'm kind of thinking of that film um, Crossroads with Steve I and, um, uh, I can't remember his name, Danny LaRusso. Can't remember his name in the film. That's kind of the, the vibe I'm getting when, when, I, when, when I listen to this. Well, that's how I'm picturing this, this, this in my head. When the outcome is literally everything that you have ever wanted, then that is massively motivating. That is going to massively influence your decision making and your subsequent behavior. And I think the wider context of the song is now that has X has made a deal with the devil at this point. I don't know the specifics of the deal. Did X want to be massively famous or did he want something else? You know, let me know in the comments. I don't know much about, about him at all, really, now I think about it. Is he now the devil's weapon? Because he says he's, he's trapped in a changing maze, as, as in he can't get out of it. He's setting his soul ablaze. That sounds like a, a devil hell type reference. And he can't control the pace. So the speed at, at, at which things are happening, he can't slow it down or stop it. Control the pace, words is going hey. Heartless is reckless, is this word of a pacifist, a word of a masochist, some all for the man, my lord. I spoke to a bad for me. He said he would save me if I gave him one thing he needed. What is this thing I pleaded? Why is the king of even? What's a, a Baphomet? Oh, I'm going to have a look. Baphomet. Where are we going? Let's have a look. Okay. So according to mythology.net by Professor Geller, a Baphomet is something with the, the head of a goat and the body of a man. And it's often confused with Satan. It doesn't sound like a particularly pleasant character. Okay, so this is this is making a bit more sense now. So the line is. Hey, heartless is reckless, is this word of a pacifist, a word of a masochist, some all for the man, my lord, I spoke to a bad for me, he said he would save me if I gave him one thing he needed, what is this thing I pleaded? I spoke to a Baphomet. He said he would save me if I gave him one thing he needed. What is this thing I pleaded? It's going to be a soul, isn't it? It's, it's got to be. So earlier when I said X had made a deal with, with the devil, I don't think he had at that point. The devil had him running in circles, feeling hopeless, building up to this transaction. So X was in a position to not turn him down. What a song. I love this so much. I love this build up and this kind of this storytelling coming up to this. Said he would save me if I gave him one thing he needed. What is this thing I pleaded? Why is the kid at even? And as I spoke, my fingers are strong. Taking a break, he smiles and tells me. 
What you crave will soon be yours. But what I crave is already mine. So the deal is done, I think. X can have whatever he wants and the devil has got what he wants. What does anima vestra mean? I don't normally look stuff up in these, but I'm very intrigued by this. I really like this kind of thing. Okay, of course it does. So ana, an, anima vestra is Latin for your soul. So that's, what, that's what's in it for the devil. The devil has his soul. Incredible. Anima. Anima Your soul. Anima. That long piano part at the end gives you so much time to think and reflect. Although I might have to cut that out as it's quite a long part of the track playing through without me talking, you know, copyright and all that stuff. So if you watch this and I've cut that piano part out at the end, then, then that is why. And listen to the timbre. I'm not sure if that's the right term, but he sounds sad. You can hear almost regret in his voice. He, he, I don't think he didn't want this deal. He, he, I think he sees it as a mistake. Maybe it was a rash decision at the time and now he's had time to reflect. Maybe he felt as if he didn't have any choice at the time. I don't think I know enough about him or his life to better comment on that. But, but you can, well, I'm picking up pain and regret in his voice and in the music. And, and, and now I think about this a bit more and what I was thinking a, a, about during, during that piano part is there were some mentions earlier about his soul being ablaze, running around in circles, kind of trapped in this maze. And I'm wondering if that was a position that the devil had put on him in order for him to sell his soul to get out of, or whether that is what was happening to him as a result of, of selling his soul and, and that's the regret that he sold his soul and his soul became you know ablazed wow wow that song is really cool if i had to write a song about selling my soul i would never in a thousand years articulate it as well as this this to me shows x's true skill and talent in music writing and storytelling I mean, if we take out the piano bit at the end, that's, that it must have been about a minute and a half. And there was a relatively long intro. You've probably got just over a minute of, of lyrics. You know, I won't say a minute of content because the whole track is the content and it all adds to it. It's all part of it. But to convey, I mean, to convey how much that I want to think about this and know more about this in such a short time is incredible. I think this is by far my favourite extract so far. I can't remember who recommended this to me, but great recommendation. 
I'm going to go listen to it again. I'm going to think about it a bit more. I'm going to enjoy it in its entirety. That's it from me. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.